Okay, so we're going to continue talking about writing net ionic equations, and we're going to do some that have acids and bases in them. So in order to do that, we want to review what we know about acids and bases. So an acid is considered to be a proton donor, and a proton is nothing more than a hydrogen nucleus. Because if you think about a hydrogen atom, all it has is one proton in the center and one electron. And if it loses that electron, it ends up as an H+. Plus. And all that's left, when it loses the electron, then, you know, the electron shell goes away, and all you have left is the nucleus. So, um, and the nucleus, all the nucleus has is a proton. So we call it a proton donor. So I have a HCl is an acid. When it goes into water, it's going to become H plus plus Cl minus. This is considered a proton. And the definition of a strong acid or base is just something that ionizes 100%. When I put HCl into water, it comes apart 100% into H plus and Cl minus. And these are all aqueous, okay? So there are only seven strong acids, and what you have to do is memorize them. Now there's a little bit of a trend. The first thing is that there are some of the halogen acids. And the important thing to remember is it does not start with hydrogen fluoride. In fact, in fact hydrogen fluoride is a weak acid. So it's HCl, HBr, and HI. They're all strong. And we'll talk at the end of the year about why, what makes them strong. You know, what is it about their arrangement. And then there's some others. HNO3, nitric acid. H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, HClO3, which is chloric acid, and HClO4, which is perchloric acid. Bases are considered proton acceptors, so they are things that pick up an H+. Okay? And the definition of strong base is something that ionizes 100%. The strong bases are the hydroxides of the group 1 metals, right, alkali metals, as well as three of those from group 2. And if you look at the periodic table, it's these three here, okay? So it's calcium hydroxide, oops, that should be two hydroxides, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Okay, so the assumption we make is if a base is not strong, is not on the strong list, then it's a weak base. Just like if an acid is not on the strong list, we assume it's a weak acid. Alright, so let's try these. We want to write the net ionic equation for the following acid-base reaction. So we have acetic acid. Acetic acid is H2, H, C2, H3, O2, because the acetate ion is a minus one, so I need one hydrogen and lithium hydroxide. I'm going to start off by writing the molecular formula or the molecular equation. I'm going to do the replacement so the lithium ends up with the acetate and the hydrogen, the proton, ends up with the water. HOH, which I can write as HOH or H2O. Okay. Now I have to go and look at what f ions form and I want to break apart anything that's either a strong acid or a soluble ionic compound. Okay, so I here I have acetic acid. It's not on my strong list, so I leave it intact. Lithium hydroxide has lithium, which is an alkali metal, so I break that apart into its ions. Lithium plus, plus the hydroxide minus. Lithium acetate contains acetate, and acetates are always soluble, so I end up with lithium plus, plus the acetate ion, plus water. And water is not an ion. It's a liquid, okay? It's a molecule. So let's see what's the same on both sides. So I have lithium on both sides, and that's it. So my net ionic equation is going to be HC2H3O2 plus OH minus 
gives us um, C2H3O2 minus plus water. And that should balance, right? And it does. The hydroxide plus the water give me the water. Okay. All right, let's take a look in the next one. We have hydrochloric acid, which is HCl plus ammonia. <clears throat> the hydrogen is going to come onto the NH3. So I'm going to end up with NH4 plus and the Cl minus. So I end up with NH4Cl, which is a ionic compound. Okay, so let's write what we have. Ionizing, we end up with an H plus plus a Cl minus. That's a strong acid, so it's going to ionize. NH3 is a weak base, so it does not ionize. And I end up with NH4 plus plus a Cl minus because this has ammonium, it's ionic compound, ammonium ions make things always soluble. So let's see what I have on both sides. I have a chlorine. So my net ionic equation is H plus plus NH3 gives me NH4 plus. Now make sure, like I said, that you are putting charges where charges belong. There's no charge in the ammonia, that's a molecule. Let's do one more. I have HCl plus sodium hydroxide, strong acid, and a strong base. They do the double replacement, and I end up with NaCl plus water. If I write the full ionic, I have H plus plus Cl minus plus Na plus plus OH minus, becoming, this is a soluble salt, so it's Na plus plus Cl minus plus water. I look at what is common on both sides, and what I have common on both sides are the chlorine, and the chlorine, and the sodium, and the sodium. So my net ionic equation is H plus plus OH minus, gives me H2O. And one thing that, um, if you memorize, is useful to know, and that is whenever I have a strong acid plus a strong base, this is always going to be my net ionic equation. Okay, we're going to stop there.